<laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Dong Le Shuo with China Daily. I'm at the 2018 uh, World Bank and I am of spring meetings. I'm with my colleague Chen Weihua. He has been reporting the spring meetings since Tuesday. Hi Weihua. Hi. So you were at the meeting this week. Uh, what did the economists say about the world economic outlook? Well, I mean, the economic outlook, I mean, the global economy looks pretty good, actually. The IMF, in its world economic outlook, uh, raised a forecast, you know, for economic growth for the global economy, you know, uh, by 0.2%, uh, you know, to 3.9% percent in the next two years and it marked up actually the growth forecast for most major countries China the United States Japan Europe I mean China was uh, uh, marked up by 0.1 percent so the global economy looks good I mean that's in the short term in the next two years but the IMF uh, did warn that uh, this is a great opportunity to take this uh, so-called upswing advantage and to conduct uh, structural reform, you know, financial resilience, all those kind of things. So one, like a so-called fixed loop, when it's uh, in the sunshine, there is still sunshine. So don't wait. But the IMF also warned, I mean, there was uh, risks, I mean, from a number of uh, factors like uh, high growth of the debt and uh, the trade tension going on between China, U.S. and other countries. And it's forecasted that China's growth is at 6.6% for 2018 and the growth is at 6.4% for 2019. How do you see like their forecast that has been up, up to 0.1% uh, from last fall's forecast? Yeah, I mean... China, you know, it's uh, the second largest economy in the world now after the United States and China has been contributing basically like a 30 percent, a third, more than a third of the global growth in the last decade. I mean, Asia actually contributes like a two-thirds, but one-third is from China, more than one-third. And, uh, and China, I mean, I talked to IMF officials, they've been very positive about, uh, you know, the financial reforms going on in China and uh, some, you know, transition from uh, sort of investment, export-driven economy to a more consumption-driven economy. And so this has all been very successful. China's economy now, you know, is more driven by consumption. I mean, service sector contribution to the Chinese economy has grown dramatically, actually. So people, you know, always think, I mean, China is driven by export. Actually, China is only less than 20% of Chinese GDP is driven by export. You know, it's a great change from a decade ago. So everything is uh, kind of going in the right direction but the IMF, IMF uh, did point out there was the issues like uh, the debt level is still growing too fast you know you have to do something about it i mean especially the growth rate should not be uh, that fast i mean as in the last few years so but the authority the chinese authorities have been dealing with that but you know you just need to sustain the measure actually if you listen to Christine Lagarde, the managing director this morning at the press conference, he praised the Chinese president Xi Jinping's speech at the Boao Forum, in which uh, she talked a lot about China's uh, further opening up. I mean, this is, of course, the 40th anniversary of China's opening up and reform drive. So, and she talked about, uh, you know, opening, uh, you know, lowering tariffs, reducing restriction on foreign investment, and, uh, you know, there was a free trade port about Hainan Island and being established. But, you know, Lagarde expect, uh, you know, to see more sort of actual implementation, delivery of these measures. So, it's looking good, but just we need to continue to, you know, improve the resilience, the you know, financial stability of everything. In the, in the past couple of weeks, we have been seeing 
we've been seeing the escalating of China-U.S. trade tensions. What did the world economists say about having a more healthy economic relationship between the two largest world economies? Yeah, that's a very important point. You know, it's surprising, you know, at the first press conference to announce this World Economic Outlook. I actually asked the question about uh, the trade tension, you know, whether they think unilateral action taken by the Trump administration is a, a major source of uncertainty for their forecast for the global growth. And surprisingly, journalists from Africa, Latin America, Europe, they all ask the same question. Uh, what's the possible impact on their region, on their country from this trade tension, especially trade war, you know, if it, uh, you know, happened between China and the United States? The IMF in its World Economic Outlook actually warned, seriously, that uh, they are very against this unilateral trade action. They want members to resort to a multilateral mechanism, like the World Trade Organization, you know, Please don't take exceptional, what they call the measures. You know, that's uh, pretty much referring to the Trump administration's threat or imposition of tariff, you know, on the steel aluminum, and then later the threat of tariff under uh, Section 301. So this is a big concern, obviously. I mean, the IMF also pointed out that uh, trade deficit by the United States and is actually not caused by any trading partners, but rather the U.S. fiscal policy, its higher spending and its tax cut. Actually, Christine Lagarde this morning said that the U.S. actually has not heeded the IMF uh, sort of advice to take measures under this very good condition to reduce deficits and cut spending. Instead of uh, the U.S. actually has been like uh, increasing deficit, taking measures to increase deficits and increase spending. So that's uh, quite to the disappointment of IMF. I think. So, but IMF officials, I think, they are quite uh, somewhat, I think, uh, cautiously optimistic. This is uh, still warning shots, and there was a trade war has not really happened. So, so they think. Uh, two countries can still resolve, you know, their disputes uh, in the coming days, weeks, months, you know, through negotiations and dialogue. And they expect, I mean, the worst kind of say, case scenario is not very likely. So worst case scenario means a full-blown trade war. I mean, they didn't define. Actually, they say it's hard to define what is a really trade war. I mean, it's like, you know, but... So that's a definition problem, but yeah. But certainly we should be cautious about that because the biggest loser, according to IMF, is not just China, US, but really the biggest loser is the global economy because everyone is so interconnected. It's all in supply, supply chain and in different countries. So you're just going to do so much damage I mean, to the global economy if a trade war really happens. You know, we have seen there are a lot of African delegates here. I want to, you to share a little bit on your perspective on Chinese investment in Africa, especially the AIIB, what they have been doing there, and now what are their responses? Well, I mean, the, I wouldn't, uh, you know, I think there was a lot of discussion about the Belt and the Road, I mean, here. The Chinese investment in Latin America, Africa, I mean Central Asia, under this so-called uh, Chinese BI Belt Road Initiative, is a big attention, a lot of attention here. You know, because it involves basically like 70 countries and maybe 30 international organizations. So there was a lot of talk recently about uh, that some countries run into debt problems. But, you know, overall, you know, I, when I talk to whether I am officials or, you know, other experts, they are very, you know, sort of uh, happy about this Belt Road Initiative because this is a great opportunity 
for the world, especially the developing country, we, which really have access to lo- sort of uh, loans or you know, funding to infrastructure, which is uh, very inadequate in their country in terms of infrastructure. Finally, they are going to be connected in the global supply chain, I mean, eventually, I mean, gradually, I would say. There are some issues raised, of course, how to do more due diligence in selecting the project, like uh, to prevent the risk of debt, especially, you know, the governance or the, you know, the financial capacity of certain countries, you know, which are not particularly strong in, uh, in their capacities. And actually, the IMF and uh, China in its government just a week ago launched in Beijing a so-called China IMF, I think, a capacity building, uh, roughly that name, in Beijing, to help train people. And the IMF show actually said they want to cooperate, collaborate with Chinese government to make the Belt Road Initiative successful. AIB is uh, c- contributing to the okay, right. infrastructure c- uh, construction fund in Asia, and okay, it's so playing a uh, role the China Development Bank. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I think uh, this is uh, yeah, certainly you know, very, very welcome, but they just need to sort of uh, China is a you know a newcomer sort of on international stage. I mean it's a learning process. So I hope I mean they will just improve their work over the years, and it's. Uh, a great idea, I mean, strategy. Mm-hmm. Thank you, thank you so much, Mr. Chen, for your insights. Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah, see you next yeah. time. Enjoy. Thank Have you. Have fun. <laughs>